Hello, and welcome to the inaugural episode of The Rhino and the Dude. Who we got here with us, Eddie? Well, you're the Rhino. Well, I'm the Rhino, but who do we got here with us? And I'm the Dude. And this is Jesse Stern. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse Stern, the, what is it, the art of the scrap? Oh, it's super scrap, yeah. Super, is it yeah, super it's scrap? Just, no, it's just art of scrap. Okay. No, but it's whatever you want. It's whatever you yeah. want. Art of the Scrap Champion. Is it 145? Uh, correct. Yeah. 145 you ain't, you ain't, and, a, and a pound. And a pound. And One, a, 146. <laughs> no, 145 and a pound. And That's, a pound. Yeah, yeah. yeah point nine. Pl- plus one, yeah. Point yeah, nine, yeah, right? Point nine. Not plus one, point nine. Um, yeah, and also, uh, what's... Um, Oh, the Stellar Fights champion back in the day. Oh, back in the day. Yeah. How far are we going back? I, I mean, we decade? can go. We can go back a decade. You know, I'm still living in my uh, my old heyday. You know, I gotta. We gotta. Hey, that yeah. was a really good old heyday. It was. I got excited was good watching you fight and all your interviews, <laughs> yeah, all yeah, of man. it. But uh, you know, you know, I, I'm gonna be like everybody else, and you know, you see them post uh, post their uh, photos from or their videos from like 15 years ago, and I'm like, dude. What are you doing now? <laughs> your life must be pretty depressing because you're still posting your highlights. Like I, like I, when it comes up as a memory, I'll share it. But I'm like, but I don't want to be one of these guys. Is like, what what's going on in his life now? But he's just sharing all these old stuff. I like, do it for scarring. Yeah, I, I try to scar myself when you when you see old technique and things like that, and you're like, oh my god, that's hideous. Like you, I just hit sends just so it just sticks in my soul <laughs> yeah so i can change that i just don't want to be like oh forget about that i want to remember me sucking yeah <laughs> like that's just a personal thing, i mean you yeah. never really suck though you i don't know man i mean you, you, if you look at so if, if i was considered okay back then you look at my tape back then from what you know now and how you've improved you would yeah say i suck too <laughs> i don't i mean you you went undefeated as amateur right uh correct for mixed martial arts Oh, what you, what you? Uh, yeah, WKA's. Uh, I, I, I had a couple losses there. Okay. Yeah, but that was fun. Yeah. Just a whole different, you know, side of the field there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But versatile. And I mean, people nowadays aren't very versatile. You don't see a lot of people committing or committing to both mixed martial arts and kickboxing or Muay Thai or boxing. True. It's very clicky now, which is is interesting. I I mean, another note on some other day, I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. And why do you think it's so clicky? What do you mean? I mean, I, f- I, I think I know what you mean, but... I don't see a lot of people competing in both mixed martial arts... And kickboxing. And kickboxing, and or boxing as an alternative, they, they or jiu-jitsu. Everybody, as much as before. As, you know, jumping from one to one to one, all being the same person. Hmm. I see people just committing to their field and going with it. Yeah. And I'm not sure why. I'm, I'm not... I think that there was a lack of competition before, and it was kind of like a... I I feel like it was like you kind of just got what you could get and it was kind of like, oh, you go do this and you do this and you're going to put it all together. Makes sense. I think that we were more so in the days of like we put everything together and we trained this and this and then put it all together versus now there's guys that just train jujitsu. It's kind of like the gi. Like, like, you know, back in the day you used to always put on the gi. I mean, you still put it on the gi, but – I don't know. You should still put on the gi, um, but I have this discussion all the time. When's the last time you put on the gi? Uh, quite a while and, I, <laughs> and I, I always look at those coaches and i look at them right in the eye with the most serious face ever and i said have you seen my schedule yeah. like pros and cons you got to pick and choose to a certain point yeah do exactly. i skip out on jujitsu no i do a crap ton of no gi but the gi i really wish i could because i wouldn't be a purple belt for forever yeah mm-hmm. so but anyway they, they just pe- the the lack of knowledge that people have on what you're doing behind the scenes because how many, astounds me. How many years have you trained now? Uh, going on 12. 12, 12 years, what, yeah. So you started, what, 2010? I think yeah, I'm... About 12 t- would be 2010. So I'm 12. What are you? Like eight? Eight. Yeah. eight. So that means how, what's collectively 12, 12, 8? <laughs> <laughs> 24 plus 8 is 32. We have 32 years of experience, <laughs> and everybody sitting here is a purple belt. <laughs> Man, I was a blue belt for eight years. <laughs> I was a blue belt for seven years. Eight years? No, no you no, weren't. No, I was a blue belt for seven years. <laughs> no, I, was, I was a, a blue belt for about seven, eight years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like at some points, like with gyms around here, it was like you got your blue belt, and then you're just like, well, I mean, I yeah, thought I was like, yeah. I made it. Yeah, you're it's, good for everything. I was playing. Yeah. I was playing Post Malone. Like, congratulations. It didn't come out yet, but but when it came out, I was like, this reminds me when I got my blue belt. 
<laughs> Way back in the day. Yeah. Speaking of getting blue belts, you know what happened the day after I got my blue belt? Do you remember what you did? What did I do? You tapped me out the day after I got I tapped you out? <laughs> you got me to make a joke. We were doing like MMA grappling. You I, just like you know what? My like, neck and choked me out. I, I don't remember ever tapping you out. That was like the like one in time my I life. remember my life. Like, because you've always been kind of bigger than me. So, like, I, I'm like, even like when you were new and didn't know what you were doing, it was like, I remember I told you one time, like, you were doing something, and I was like, well, if. If I was closer to your size, I probably would have, I could have triangled you there. So you don't want to do that. But I was literally like 140 pounds soaking wet, and you were what when you started? <laughs> I was like, I was a big boy when I started. Yeah. But I just remember I got my blue belt. I was like, yeah. I came in class the next day. I was like dead exhausted because we did like the whole gauntlet thing where everyone just jumped on me for like which they don't do that as wrong. much anymore. No, I have not seen someone do that in like since. Did you have that when you got your blue belt? Yeah, I got it. Yeah. No one did they do the gauntlet. The go- yeah, yeah, like, like the everybody. Ro- the roll guy. Yeah, the roll guy. Yeah, not, yeah. not the, not the whip. No, I never got whipped, yeah. though. I never, I never got, got whipped either, but that's because. Did you like, get whipped? Yeah, I got whipped. So, so, um, I, um, so, so well, I got my blue belt after the, whole, like, right, I think around the whole, like, like, uh, and I think you probably did too with the, the Lloyd Irvin controversy that so happened. I got mine. Because remember, when we had that class where it was like pretty much everyone's white belts and there was that Matt, the one blue belt. Yeah. And then the coaches were like, purple and brown belts so i got my blue belt like right before everyone else started getting theirs yeah and i think everyone we was were really kinda, pissed at me we were kind of me and steve and <laughs> all steve were you know furious we were me. just like why did like we've been here this, like this longer decision. than 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 eric like why does eric get his blue belt <laughs> it was it i don't know man Everybody. and then eric was supposed i mean no uh steve was supposed to get his blue belt the day i got mine and yeah. he just like had something happen and didn't show up yeah, and didn't get up. it for like another six <laughs> months <laughs> right there, there's the circumstance sometimes a little bit of like small politics like you know just personal preference not even like like po- political political it's just like all right it, so somebody missed out on that week so the coach is like all right i'm gonna stick it to him for six months or however it goes that's it's like gosh that's not really my, accurate my grandma you know? mom had a the open heart surgery i couldn't make it in had to drive yeah, her no blue, no, no blue belt for you no blue belt for you that's right but also you have the time thing you know yeah. so while you're training you're striking and you're wrestling and everything else while this other guy is just training gi Mm-hmm. Of course, he's going to progress faster in that. So it's true. It, and you just have to shake that off because they progress quick. They get their belts and then you get held behind. But then you got to remember you, 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 are, you are a really day. good source of yeah. knowledge in both, you know, boxing, kickboxing. Yeah. Thai, uh, yeah. And mm-hmm. the list goes on. And, and, on and I on. feel like some di- it's like now I'm, I've just been training straight jujitsu. So I feel like some people like don't know that I like fought MMA and all. And I'm like, you got I, the next generation. They don't know. Yeah, they don't. They, know. They, don't they don't know. Yeah. So, so, but I, but I feel like sometimes, like, like not being, but I'm like, these guys think I suck because just straight jujitsu. Like, they're probably just like, man, this guy's been training this long. Oh, he sucks. You, you, gotta, you gotta do the flex, right? <laughs> yeah. So I'll, I'll like sit there, even if they have a little bit of knowledge of like my my mixed martial arts career. Anyway, I'll get to like half guard and like they're sitting there all framed up controlling and then i just like hold one like across the hip like the block and then i just like posture up and hold the fist yeah just to look at them <laughs> yeah they go like oh and you put can the just fear see of god the, in their heart not even the fear it's just like it's a bit of fear i guess but it's mostly like i don't know what's going on oh my yeah. god they put two and two together and i'm like yes <laughs> well that, that's the that's the big thing like people people don't realize like how much punches change the game it does Oops. yeah it changes the game yeah as I interrupt my own podcast. <laughs> <laughs> ring, ring, ring. Um, but even the thought disruption, like even beyond pain, like people are like, oh, I'm very tough. I can take a punch. It's not even about that. Like I'm sitting here trying to pass your guard all day and you're very tentative to, you're paying attention mm-hmm. to every angle I'm holding. But as soon as I throw a strike at you and you do that flinch moment, mm-hmm. while you're doing that flinch moment, I'm already progressing because you flinched. Yeah, I already got the past your leg. order of what you're doing. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. I, and I learned that when, I, when I was living everything. in Florida, mm-hmm. Um, the black belt uh, that I was training with, we did. I mean, he's a black belt, so I was a blue belt. Yeah, you have to tell me more about that trip one day. You were living out of a van, right? Living in a van yeah, down by no, the river. No, we gotta get the awesome. Eddie in the van down by the river. Yeah. Um, but but anyway, like I just noticed it, like with training with guys that were like a lot better than me when I was a blue belt, and like we one time we like put on gloves, and it was like all past the guard, and I was just like, I'm the black belt now. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's just different. It's yeah. just different because I had a couple fights at that point, and then I guess the jujitsu guys were just jujitsu guys that right. no. were tapping me out otherwise. But and I don't think anybody should be confident. They're always like, there's always that person that thinks, oh, I could hold my own in that. If you've never done it before, and whatever it is, like yeah. I don't care if it's playing chess or playing volleyball 
If you've never done it before, chances are you probably won't be. Exactly. Like for any regard. And and, and the Try same, it and then judge It's the it. same thing even in um, self-defense too. Because it's like, you know, yeah, all however many fights and all. Yeah, it's right, very right. likely I, that— I feel like I'd get my ass handed to me if I was like had a fight in a bar room now. Like, I, yeah. I mean, I don't know if you get your ass handed to you, but, but like there's people that are so confident that, oh, I train. I'll, I'll whoop this guy or whatever. I'm like— there's a lot of other variables that that you're like, you know in jujitsu striking whatever it is, you're not accounting for the pipe, the guys, yeah, you know, say, what's in that guy's pocket, the guy's pocket, the guy's in friend, the guy's pocket, yeah, you know, or so, his friend, yeah. yeah. Like I had this conversation with somebody, and they're like, "No, man," I'm like, "I don't know where you, I mean, where where your self defense experience is, but." Yeah, like hey. you don't know what's or gonna happen. <laughs> good old C red. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Oh yeah, I, I love see that. red. I see red. No, but I'm talking. Ab- yeah. I'm talking about like guys that are actually like good at what they do. That are like, oh man, and on the street, oh. you know, I'd, oh, I'm like, you don't, oh, I see. I you see. don't, yeah, you one. don't know that. Like, you don't know. You, you, you don't know. So. <laughs> because how many times does a guy that's just like strong and good at wrestling get given you a a fit in jujitsu, yeah. and he's not even good. He's not even technically good. So if that guy was on top of you and he had a buddy that just wanted to kick you in your face, you got you we got th- collect. Of 32 years of experience, we said we could get killed today. <laughs> you know what I'm right, saying? Right. <laughs> so, years ago, I used to be a bouncer. Yeah. Right around the corner. Well, here. he knocked somebody out. Oh, I, I knocked a bunch of people out. It was bad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I'll tell you, once you get into like a big street brawl, yeah. everything goes out of mm-hmm. out of mind. There's one chaos. night where we were we started to fight. Someone started fighting the bar and we dragged him out, and it was one of the Towson football players. Mm-hmm. And so it pretty much turned to like the Towson defensive line. First, all the bouncers at this bar I bounced at. Mm. And I walked out the door to get like help out in the fight. And someone cold cocked me the second I walked out the door. Hit me so hard, my ass hit the ground. And then my shoe flew up in the air off my foot. Wow. And I put on my shoe and proceeded to start, like, grab the first guy and just start hitting him. <laughs> like, it, it was one of those things that was, like, instinctual. Just grab someone, hit him. Yeah, that'll rock you into your primitive state. Just yeah. cold cocked out in the oh, side. Yeah. Just and, walking like, out the door. There was, like, one of my buddies got dragged across the street like we're in the middle of the road in Towson and yeah. got dragged across the street getting like jumped by a couple guys I went and like ran over my one buddy and just started hitting people getting to him and then like we ran and got the guy across the street and then like we were fighting guys all the way like across the street in an alley from mm-hmm. where we were working like we covered 40-50 yards of space True. Yeah. fighting at this point to get there Yeah. and like there was still a huge fight like out in front of the front door mm-hmm. and during this whole time we had this guy we worked with his name was old mike was standing at the front door just holding the door closed <laughs> from the inside <laughs> he was like that you know like in every staff you have that guy who doesn't do shit at your job yeah old was mike smart. was that guy and he was like 60 years old and he carried like handcuffs with him so like he could like, try to handcuff people if, he, if they got in a fight he was a weird <laughs> dude he was a weird dude and then every time they were they like, really oh. for that or were they for something else well they were fuzzy but i don't I, he just said they were cheaper with the fuzzy i don't know <laughs> but and every he was the guy. Every time they'd be like, "Oh, we had a party. There's extra food downstairs." He would have like five plates full and already put in his car before anyone knew. Mm. He was mm. that guy, and I hated him. And after that night when I got cold cocked, and he watched me. When I rewatched the video. He watched me get cold cocked, in the face, and then stood there and just closed the door. Mm. <laughs> like didn't like check to see if okay. Yeah, he's just an anti-violence. Like, mm. He said uh, Buddhist monk. Mm, That's no. what it is. Working as a bouncer. Working yeah, working as, as a bouncer. bouncer. <laughs> At probably like money. 58 years old. Like he was an old dude. But he's, he's doing the good work because he's trying to keep the violent people out of bouncing. So he's taking one of their spots. <laughs> he said, he said, man, this kid shows violence. I'm just going to leave him out there. Held the door though. He held the door. That keeps the people inside from seeing what happens outside. It's a business perspective, but also keeps people from joining. It was a glass door. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> and there was like probably like 10 windows facing where we were. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, bud. I can't. I can't argue for you now, <laughs> mm. man. But yeah, like you're not like you, people don't account for a lot of things. Yeah. And also, you take anyone who knows a fight, and you give the other person a knife. Oh yeah, mm. world of difference. I mean, and the other thing is, people that have been stabbed, yes. our old coach yeah. been stabbed, or yeah, yeah, has been stabbed. Um, and uh, you know, they they don't. You don't know that you're getting stabbed. It feels no. like punches. Yeah. Everybody that's ever been stabbed that has been in a knife fight that I've talked to, it's they're like, oh, I thought the guy was hitting me. And then afterwards, after the adrenaline, I look down, why am I bleeding? And oh, crap, yeah. I got stabbed five times. Yeah. So it's like you're not accounting for that. And they tell you in knife defense, if you ever take it, 
you're going to get cut yeah. unless you're going to Detroit Urban Survival. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he'll say you're not going to get cut. <laughs> but you know, oop, did yeah. I knock your? Sh- yeah, okay. it's fine. It's fine. Um, lid. Yeah, so uh, you, they tell you you're going to get cut. So it's like you know, mm-hmm. I don't know. Even so, I'll tell you for instance. You know, when I had to defend against my dad, I, I thought that my dad wasn't going to do what he did. So I had back control, you know, I just controlling him from the back. What does my dad do? Boom, throws Headbutt his head you. back. Yep. Head butts me good. You know, Like, you know that. You heard that in, like, the little south of four. But it's not ingrained. Mm-hmm. If I take your back, I don't think that, oh, I need to. But in reality, if Damn. you take somebody's back on the street, cheek to the to the back. Cheek mm-hmm. to the back. Cheek to the back. And then yeah. the next time he tried to headbutt me, my cheek was to the back. And he's like, I'm going to hurt you. And I'm like, my cheek's yeah. to the back. <laughs> No, no, it's too close. That's and like, then he was trying to judo throw me, and I'm like, my hips are too low. <laughs> right, there's there's, a, there's another common one that that I fell victim to because you know early in the like one year in, I thought all that you know all that in a bag of chips, right? You know, I just I could just take anybody on. Then um, a guy named Justin at the shop I used to work at. So a little shout out to him if he ever listens. But like like yeah, what are you gonna do? So I was thinking to just grapple, right? And he's just like, or body punching, right? So he reaches over my shoulder, grabs my hood, pulls it down over my head, and holds it down. I'm stuck in my sweatshirt like this, not able to move. Now, obviously, if I double leg, that's probably the best go from there. But I mean, a bunch of shop equipment around. But like, that's it. He shut down every game I ever had just by pulling my hood down, exactly, and controlling my head, controlling my sight, and then he just kept like jabbing me to the body. And I was like, man. All those years, just 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 because of some stupid little trick. But I guess like it goes to show like the what do they say like the more you know, the more you realize that you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's 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 so true. Right. You get to see all the limitations <laughs> and the, everything that can be done and what you are not good at. So like I feel like everybody's starting off. You're like, yeah, I wish somebody messed with me now that I know how to defend myself. <laughs> and then like you get in, you're like, yeah. You know what? I really don't want to have to yeah, I don't go down that road. I'll, I might be okay. I'll probably be. The chances are I'll be okay, but I might not be okay. Yourself, you know, as soon as you start to feel that, you know, I'm on top of the world, you know, I, I, nobody can hurt me. I, I'm the best. You need to go, go sit, spar. Go spar. Yeah, go yeah. spar. You got to keep finding that thing that will mm-hmm. test you and will knock you on your butt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's that's, that's your duty to do that. Go find the spot where you suck. Yeah. Oh, quick tip for anyone in the street fight. When I bounced, I would we would kick people in their legs. Like, if they, like, pushed us, we'd oh, just yeah. blast their leg real quick. Oh, dead leg real this quick? Straight. Some guys would just drop. Like, oh, yeah. we, I would, like, kick them as hard as I could <laughs> right away. Like, I'd push, my, put my hand in their face, just kick them in the leg. That's smart. And, like, That's very smart. a lot of guys were like, okay, I've okay, I don't want that. that. <laughs> I don't want that. And I'd be like, okay, get out. And, like, we'd walk them out. And then sometimes people would be like, and then you'd kick them again. Because they'd, they'd come charging in real hard, you'd kick them again. I always found that stopping, I mean, stop. Not stopping somebody coming at me, but I've stopped numerous people going at other people, mm-hmm. and I just like double underhooked them and yeah. put my head like in their in their chin, like to like they're like looking up, and they have double underhooks, just like a tight bear hug, mm-hmm. and just walked them away, and they're just like, I don't know what to do because <laughs> nobody knows how to pumble. Well, yeah. But I mean, that's not like it's a multiple. Even hard to pumble when you're that yeah. deep in. Yeah, you got the head position. <laughs> on your, the your head's yeah. here. Yeah. You, you got to be like, yeah, my head's underneath. Like you know, nobody knows what the I, pumble I, is. Yeah. You know? And also, it's super like demasculating to be like. Yeah. Sorry, sir. I and I'm, and you're just like walking them away. That's what I did. Just walk them away. Like, you'll no, get, man, it ain't going to happen. Like, that you, chill out. Foot four chill guy out. with muscle that's already taller than oh, you yeah. structurally wise. So he just picks you up. Yeah. yeah. You're like, shoot. Or he just keeps walking. Just doesn't I mean, stop just, him at all. I mean, don't do it. Don't do it to that guy. Don't do it to that guy. But that that's something that's very basic that I found that, like, if the person's within relative size and they're trying to attack somebody else, you can, like, do that and walk them out of the, the space. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's the best thing to do if they have friends that is a all. good idea we shall put it in the good idea box yeah. yes <laughs> <laughs> and so that guy just starts walking with you on his chest yes <laughs> Fred, you gotta, until, you, he, until he just you know you gotta bring wraps around and suplexes you. you you gotta bring out that little thing they have at amusement parks that says you know this tall so you yeah. like just do a quick measure okay this move won't work you must yeah. be this tall yeah. ready to hug you <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. and i'm not that tall so you know Mm, man. Yeah, and street fights, street fights, and uh, just way to maneuver around stuff. Yeah, nobody really thinks about how hard surfaces are too, like yeah. the corners of um, uh, tables and the actual brick wall that's holding up the whole place, or the hard floors. You're so used to training on mats. Sure, mm-hmm. adrenaline, like when you're doing shots on like concrete, you're not gonna feel it while the adrenaline's pumping. But still, like when your back, when the your head hits the mat. It's not hitting the mat anymore. Yeah. Everything hurts ten times more. You're not wearing a mouthpiece anymore, which which 
it actually does make a big difference as far as receiving shots to the face. Yeah. So yeah, it's all these little things you don't. Unless really you're one of them guys until... that keeps the mouthpiece in here. <laughs> it's like <laughs> time to go. <laughs> you know, one time when I was selling it's trash. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. One Bring time... a helmet too. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently my father like used to do that. <laughs> Apparently my father got out of the car one time and had a motorcycle helmet on. Somebody was messing with him in traffic, so he got out of the car, put a motorcycle helmet on and a baseball bat, and he's like, "You got a problem." <laughs> no, he's ready for war. <laughs> that's, 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 he's <laughs> like, he was going John Wick on the ass. Like, <laughs> John Wick. Judo throwing the oh, shot to shoot. the chest. <laughs> It's like, what's the worst that happened? You lose the bat. Okay, worst case scenario, their buddy grabs it and uses it against you. That's worst case scenario. But then you get yeah. the helmet, protects your head. If they punch your head, boom, you still have a helmet. Heads are tough to begin with, but yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, my hands getting better. I'm punching somebody's skull. Oh yeah, Did you fight. you broke your. I broke it in the first round of that fight. Yeah. Oh damn. Yeah, I was feeling up on it. Like at the end of the round, just. Just making sure I didn't know where it was. I knew it didn't feel right, so I didn't know if it was the hand or the forearm. But anyway, you could see it feeling on the way back. And then I swear I told the corner, like, hey, my right hand's damaged. My right arm is broke. Right? And I guess they didn't hear it because they kept telling me to throw a right hand in the second round. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, you know, just, just calm, complacent or whatever. And they kept saying it. So I finally did, like, a little hand signal like this, and they got the gist. But it's just like, god damn. Hey, come on. Yeah. I'm not going to throw the right hand. Let's move on. <laughs> So what's the what's um the organization that you fought for last? Like what's their um... that was a uh, art of scrap, art of scrap out of Indiana. Okay, um, pretty they, big, pretty. Uh... I mean, it's a local show, kind of like Shogun around here. But the production was actually very good for like it was in like a a, a good big theater. Like it, it felt just like Shogun size and all. Um, and they did sell a lot of tickets. They had. Uh, I think there was twenty something fights that night. Oh really? It was That's insane. a lot. That's long, and they, they got it all done within three hours. It How? was fight to nope. fight to fight to nope, fight to no fight. intermission. Uh there was an intermission, but like as soon as the they, they announced the winners in the cage, right? As soon as those guys got out the cage, the guys were walking out from the next one. So it's not like they waited for you to get in the oh, back and oh. sent out the next. No, they were cooking. They were moving. They, they were moving. Like with gotcha. nonstop. There was so, like no shoeies. No, no shoeies. No shoeies. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unless you consider the last fight a shoey, but that was uh, Will Brooks was the main event. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, oh really? That's it was cool. interesting to see him pop up out of nowhere. Has he? Has he? I haven't heard that name in a long time. Yeah, I, I haven't a few really local followed. shows. He's like twenty four and two or something like that outside the UFC. He was in the UFC for a bit. Yeah, and, for a minute, and didn't didn't he? Wasn't he somebody? Or Bellator, that, Bellator. Yeah, but he I thought he had a UFC. UFC. Did they sign him? Yeah. yeah, something like that. I have, have to pull up his record. You need like a screen here, so like a tablet. So yeah, just, like, <laughs> look up stuff. Real I quick. mean, yeah, the phone. Oh, no, that's a phone. I guess that is a computer. Yeah, yeah. I got you. <laughs> um, but yeah, so what I mean by the Ashui and taking a lot of time is like uh, Will Brooks' opponent snapped his shin, and I didn't even know about it till the next day. I uh, were like, what about Oh, that I shin? saw that. I saw that. Right. Yeah, I did see that. I didn't know that it was Will Brooks that fought that. Yeah, yeah. Huh. He kicked him. What, what happened to oh, you're, Eric? You're pulling up the I'm, I'm, Will Brooks. I'm getting record. on Sure Dog right now. Sure Dog. That's, sure that's so 2012. Sure. It was the first thing that came up. He has 23 like, wins, five losses, one draw. What's his record in the UFC? Did he, did he lose all his fights in the I'm UFC? I'm trying to find that. Give me, give me like 30 seconds. Kicked out. Yeah. What, did he do something? Mm. Oh, you said kicked no, no, out. No, no, I'm saying like once you get a bunch of losses, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you win and did your time and got out. Gotcha. So he, lo he lost to Nick Lentz, okay. Charles Oliveira, okay. Alex, Dan Alex Oliveira. Okay, well, sorry for the Oliveira. A couple Oliveira. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't, Joe don't. Oliveira. Don't be an Oliveira. <laughs> yeah. Will, Will Brooks is like, I hate that name. He lost to he lost Saad to three Awad. I'm not. I'm horribly butchering that name in Bellator. And he lost to someone at the top of this list too. He lost to in Battlefield FC two, Battlefield Fighting Championships. He lost to Gleason Tebow. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, it's and outside had, the UFC. He's probably juiced out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Usada's not chasing him. Yeah. Didn't uh, Micah just fought uh, Gleason Tebow in yeah. PFL, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's fighting a. a T Bell used to be fifty five. Now he's at one seventy and a, uh, obviously a jacked one seventy two. Juiced. Are they? Are he, they he testing? Was a, oh yeah, he's big. He was boy. always a swole little man. Yeah. I feel like he was always short for like one fifty five too. You think that he's? But, you oh. think he's on the juice? Probably. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, but most. Likely. I mean, PFL's testing is pretty pretty good. Did, I mean, you fought for VFL? No. No. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's just as much as any other organization. <laughs> yeah. No. All no, right. No, 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 I mean, they don't have you. If you don't have Usada, I guess you can get away with a lot more. Well, right. people are even beating well, USADA. Even, even you can yeah. you can beat USADA. There's um, more yeah. money in doping than there is in anti-doping. Yeah. So 
It's right. always going to be around. Yeah. And even how the tests are designed, um, from my understanding, it's like, uh, so you have these new compounds out, yada, yada. So they develop tests for those compounds. You just get a different compound that does the same effect of the one that you had previously, but it's a different compound. Mm -hmm. So they don't have tests for that specific one. Yeah. So it's doing the same thing. So uh, this weird thing showed up on the test, but they don't have a way to test all what it is. Until they know what it is. (laughs) Until they know what it is, and then they make a test for it. So they always stay ahead. So Yeah. Stay ahead of the game. USADA should have made a test for the gas station dick pills. Right. you're telling me. Right. (laughs) And the picograms. Like, John Jones is clean. (laughs) Right. Right, a little bit of a sprinkle of politics and a little cash and a little behind the scenes. A little scenes. bit of uh, a lot of money. Yeah. Also, in my mind, in anything in MMA ever, them moving that show, that like card the week of, that's crazy. Is the craziest thing I've ever heard of in history. I don't remember that. So when he was going to fight Gustafson again, so but uh-huh. he failed the drug test because of picograms, right? Yeah. So they moved it from like I think Vegas to Anaheim. Yeah. The week of. I'm I'm pulling out the phone again. Hold I on, thought, sorry. And I thought I need California home. would have stricter rules placed for that. Maybe not. No. Nah. Maybe because. Let me be devil's advocate there. You move it from there to there because it's within driving distance. Because everybody that bought tickets to that show will have to go to that show. Well, well they definitely changed it because of the stair, the or the picograms or whatever. So? That's what I remember. No, I mean yeah. I, I I'm leaning more towards that way. I'm just trying to play it devil's advocate. Okay, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, don't know. Well, I mean, I'm why would they out. just change the whole show? Yeah, I don't know. Because that's still how many... I mean, yeah, what Anaheim to Vegas is still... The commissioner was saying, no, uh, Dana White, I am in charge of you. And he's like, no, I can move this whole show. And he's like, no, you can't watch me. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, even that's still kind of far, like, to assume. That is uh, Because, like, far, driving yeah. from Vegas to just the California line is, is like, a three-hour drive. Because I was going to do it at one point. Um, but, uh, yeah, you're right. You shot all my, uh, my, uh, little guesses to shit. So uh, what's that? Like all my tra- trying to play devil's advocate. So yeah, it was the drugs. It was the drugs. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just saying it's, it's, I know it's three hours because uh, unfortunately me and my mom, we went to Vegas and our plan was we, we had a flight into Vegas. She had like a little event that she had to do for work and then we were going to go to California. Um, but my aunt ended up dying. Um, and we went to Vegas for like you know, a couple of days and then had to fly back out of Vegas to come back for everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, but yeah, we, we were like, yeah, we're going to get a rental car. It's going to be three hours. So that's all. Actually, I've still never been to California though. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got it up here. So the event was originally expected to take place at the T-Mobile arena in paradise, Nevada. Yeah. Part of the Las Vegas metropolitan area. However, on December 23rd, the event was moved to the forum in Inglewood, California due to Jones drug test abnormally abnormality stemming from earlier that month the test found trace amounts of terinabol in jones system the same substance tested positive for in 2017 that led to the 15 month suspension so it was moved from probably because he, he couldn't have been cleared in nevada yeah and, yeah and they want to keep that yeah, well, John Jones. That card okay. also. I'm pretty sure if I remember that card pretty decently, that card was not like stacked at all. It was like if he fights if, and then John if, Jones. If he dropped, it would have been a, John Jones. But I do a, know that there was some yeah. some controversy for the guys that were lower on the card. They, they I think like, they didn't compensate them, and they, they had to like, for, like change search, everything. Yeah, so it's to, like now you have double the double the accommodations just, yeah, and double everything. Cost. Expense lists. Yeah. Yeah. Your family has to travel three plus hours to get. It's, yeah. it's changed a little side. bit from what just being around Tucker and, and like even with the PFL, like all the bigger organizations, they're getting it down as far as like, OK, send me all your corner info, like all their license, like actual driver's license, get all that. They, they pretty much put all those ducks in a row for you and then send you the plane tickets and things like that. So it, yeah, is, just, it is getting more organized and everything gets bigger. Yeah. Speaking of PFL, did you see on Facebook today? What's that? Mm-mm. Shelton posted. Shelton's, oh, Shelton's fighting next Friday. Friday. Yeah, I already knew that. Yeah, oh, I, very I talked good. to him. Cool. Yeah. 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 He's, he's yeah. got a, a late drop in. Yeah. 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 And their seasonal based thing. I love that seasonal thing. Yeah. It's I, pretty I cool. Think, I like I really want to start like. following it, but I like I just haven't I don't know. I haven't I want to follow a seasonal. I like uh Clay Collard. You yeah. ever watch him? Yeah. I watched his fight watch. last There's night. There's a lot of good guys <clears> he lost in PFL. 
He lost the decision last night. Hey, like, that, that, that million dollars attracts yeah. some, attract yeah, attract some, some people. But yeah. what's crazy about PFL is I feel like the guys that are coming over from the UFC are, are losing. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, like, well, that's because they keep signing the, all these old guys, right? Yeah. These older well, that, guys who are beat up. That and there's a few people in the PFL that are, that are that really are, monsters. Yeah. That, yeah. Okay. You know, it's like they don't even bother going to the UFC because it's like, okay, UFC makes you famous. But, like, here's, it's going to take me 10 years what I can make in a year here. Yeah. No. Oh. So, I mean, it oh, attracts yeah. some big fish. But, you know, like you always thought, like, like back in the day when a guy left the UFC and he went somewhere, like, you'd be like, yeah, he's about to be champion there. That ain't the case no more. Like, well, these guys, that, guys was the, that was the case for a lot of people then, period. There's plenty yeah, yeah. of good guys out there that are not signed by the UFC for one way exactly. or another. Yeah. Like, the UFC rather miss them or um, it, they just, you know, there's certain a certain tie. Like, for right now, like, nobody's signing Russians for, for other reasons. Um, like, there's a million different reasons why they could have just missed. They don't sell a lot. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. So like they don't feel like taking the investment. Like if you if you're liked by the UFC, they invest in you, and they know you're not going to make money early on. But in three or four fights, yeah, they know you'll make a lot of money. Yeah, so they'll give you the TV time. They'll spend money to send TV crews to your house and all that stuff. Yeah. So I mean, it's more prominent now than it used to be. So yeah, I don't know, but there's still plenty of guys. There's monsters out there. I mean, look at One FC and how they're gaining all like the Thai guys yeah. now. Yeah. And they're all transitioning over. There's monsters out there. Yeah, I mean, and that's always been the thing. Like, is UFC really the the top? Because I feel like that's been proved wrong before, and people will argue it. And I'm like, well, when WEC got merged, what happened to the UFC's lightweight division? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, like it, the, the right. WEC guys came went right to right. the top. I mean, who was left? Nate Diaz I, and I view it as Frank like Edgar. peppering, right? So you got your Frank top Edgar ten in the UFC, down. which are incredible, right? But then you have like your top five, and all the other organizations are just as incredible, if not better, or maybe a little. It all depends. Like really good guys in each one at yeah. the top, but also some some not so amazing guys. You know? Yeah, I hate saying that because they're all like freaking good. Like yeah. High skill level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard to say, oh, you're 15. Oh, you're not the best. Like, no, the top 15. Top 15 what are you nice. talking yeah, about? That's nice. It's yeah, perspective. Man. Getting a ranking anywhere is nice. Yeah. When you really think about it. Yeah, and I mean, that's the, that's the thing, too, with the UFC, too, is I feel like they can miss out on guys like the guy Clay Howard. He was in the UFC back in the day. Oh, was he? And he didn't do good. He wasn't his time. Yeah. And he had some losses. And now... I mean, he's. I mean, he's still. He just lost last night in the PFL. I, I don't know if you guys watched that fight, but it it was kind of like, eh. Like he was he was piecing the guy up, and he was like a jujitsu guy, and he was able to get a couple takedowns, and almost choked him at one point. He like, yeah, he won the fight, but if it's you know he, he didn't ain't, look good winning it. You know, I don't think that he's like gonna. I don't think that he's gonna be like, yeah, Clay, I beat your ass. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> like, it, was, it was close. And, and yeah. Like, but but Clay kind of you know what he what he landed. It was like yeah, like mm, he, he he dropped him and all. Like, you know what I mean? It kind of goes into like one of my biggest pet peeves, peeves that people have. People like so he lost say like in the UFC like probably almost a decade ago. I'm not sure when. Yeah. But like this happens a lot in in a lot of cases where there's a bunch of people that will go up to the top, get that experience, get shocked by that experience because of how big it is. They'll lose there and they'll go back down, but they never stop. They always get better. And that was always the name of the game. Get better, find your holes and increase them. Because five years down the line, four years down the line or whatever, you fixed all your holes and now you get up to that upper echelon again and now all your holes are covered and now all of a sudden you're winning. So it's like... Yeah, yeah, like people get better with time, and that's so you're just talking about like Oliveira. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Oliveira's the like prime example. Of that. I mean, or even There's RDA when he came R- up too. R- he R- was like a he was in the UFC for a long time, and he was just a jujitsu guy. And Gaethje's getting better. Like, uh, yeah. but his scale is a little bit smaller, mm-hmm. but but yeah, there's tons of people. As long as you don't stop, your losses don't matter. Mm-hmm. Just learn and keep getting better. That's it. And you'll get up there and you'll make the big bucks and get the 155 pound belt and all yeah. that stuff. And well, you gotta dye your hair blonde too. And you gotta dye your hair blonde because that's an insta win. Yes. Everybody and knows that. Yeah. Steal the soul of T- Tony Ferguson. <laughs> Is that next door? He's oh God, that poor guy. I, I love Ferguson. <laughs> Ferguson's one of the coolest people at MMA, but I don't get why people are telling him to quit though. Are you guys any on that side? The Who Tom Ferguson? Yeah. I mean, he's been knocked out what once? That's it. Or TK once? He lost, once, he lost to once? that Benil Dariush, right? But that was a decision. And then decision. he just got knocked out by Chandler, and he lost to um, Gaethje. So he's on three. But points. that's the thing, too, man. Is People are like, the... he should retire, but why? Yeah. He's, if he's still making good money. He's making like 150 k just to show up. Yeah. Like, and yeah. also, like, the guy guy was not looking bad in that Chandler fight until he yeah. got caught with that kick. You Would you have ever expected Chandler to throw a leaping 
front kick? No, if you're like, well, I mean, no, Chandler? I don't know. Chandler's kind of a wild man, so <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I mean, said, you don't know he what he's going to practice that one. Even from the angle he threw it, he was just winging something yeah. out there just, just for, you know, shits and giggles. But then he caught, and you could see the surprise. Like, oh. oh yeah, like, everyone was surprised. Yeah, he was even surprised. And, like, Ferguson didn't look bad in that fight. Like, it was a close fight, and Chandler just fought for the title. Right, and you're fighting two top, fights ago. You're fighting top five. You're fighting all the top five people. So what I think is going to happen next for him is he's going to be bumped down to, like, top 15, yeah. top 20. He's going to win a few times in a row and work his way back up. Not that he has to. It's just whatever. Yeah, that's, that's the, how it works. That's yeah. the thing. It's like in the UFC, you know, you, you lose – and then you know you got to fight the next best guy, and it's yeah. I mean, like you think like boxing, like he that wouldn't have happened. He wouldn't have lost three straight in a row because he would have he would have lost that fight. He would have went back and fought some cans, built it back up. And even if he wasn't there, you know, there's still would he would have had another big fight. He would have fought for a title again. Yeah, right. In the UFC, right. it's like all right, we're gonna feed you the next dog. So he like yeah. maybe you need a little bit of time to like they're recoup. Good fights you know? and good sell. And, and the, the other alternative that people say is like, oh, he's lost three in a row. He's gonna get cut. You know how much money they have invested in him and how much money he brings in? Yeah. He, he Tony could lose Ferguson 10 times in a row. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They're not cutting him. They are yeah. not releasing him out of his contract. And plus, uh, you know, you don't want all that money to go to your competitor, too. So, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah, you in reality, yeah. in reality, the, uh, the how the competition is now uh, with the other organizations, that's really helped job security within the UFC as well. Because I feel like there's some guys that they, ha- that they have held on for – Longer mm-hmm. to where ten years ago they probably be like all right you yeah. lost a couple you're gone yeah. because what are you gonna do go up and build up a you know a regional promotion like good luck you yeah. know but now there's guys that kind of have other promotions that have these platforms that they could gain from these guys mm-hmm. coming over and they don't want to give the they don't want to give Tony Ferguson to Bellator right. you know <laughs> yeah they finally they got don't the want one FC to pull up Tony Ferguson yeah right yeah no no and steal all those more of those fans over and then they had the Amazon deal which is pretty cool and then I. I really What's hope. What's that? Oh, they're going on Amazon. Yeah, he's going on Amazon. One FC. One, one FC. Sorry. And then they're yeah. doing uh, fights in um, Lumpini Stadium now, too. They get to record, which is a big deal um, if that goes through, which I think it has, which is traditionally like Muay Thai. And I guess they keep it Muay Thai. But mm-hmm. imagine One FC filming inside, you know, the Mecca Stadium. Mm. You know, that that's that's another big deal. I've Ever since like, I heard of One FC and started like following it a little bit, I've always liked One FC so much. Yeah. It's like a cool promotion. I like how they do like. Muay Thai fights, MMA fights, like all this stuff on the yeah. cards. They'll do like jujitsu grappling matches. Mm-hmm. Like they do a bunch of cool shit. Like it seems like it's more like we're not just MMA, we're martial arts. Yeah. And, martial and like arts, that's yeah. what I like better about it. Cause like yeah. I think it's cool to have like a MMA card and like throw a Muay Thai fight in, throw a grappling match in, right. throw no grappling matches. Hey man, you, some people put on so, some fun so grappling people, matches. Some people. So that's the cool thing though, because it's all being filmed. Dude, it's, you could I, just I, take the, all the Muay Thai fights cut them and put them all into one big block and then just show the world that yeah. like yeah, you don't true. have to true. show the grappling the whole thing. match it, true, true, true. or put those on the grappling channels you can cut it's the beauty of film yep, yep. so speaking also, of i oh, know i'm going with one more thing the tr- ufc one fc trade who do you think got the better deal out of it that the was demetrius johnson for ben askew <laughs> <laughs> sorry benny boy <laughs> um i mean it's got to be they they've definitely pulled one of these definitely pulled a lot more money that's out, what i'm saying yeah because ben Askren only had what two three fights in the ufc and that was it he fought what robbie lawler and then jake paul <laughs> the, <laughs> the best boxer of all time jakey paul Hey, those, those guys he announced are he's good. fighting again soon. They're getting good. Oh, God. They're, they're fighting in Madison Square Garden. They're not just sitting on their ass. They're, yeah. uh, they are training their butt off, and mm-hmm. they're, they're catching up as far as skill. They're catching up. Yeah. It's, it's cringe. But also, <laughs> it, it is cringe. <laughs> it's it's like, ah. They are putting in the work. I'll yeah, give they, them are. That. they are. They, they are. are they played the 4D chess, too. They picked Ben Askren, who had one of the oh, best yeah. MMA records ever, but has no boxing at all. Mm, and they're smart. like, and smart. so like people who are looking at paper are like, wow, this guy has like this huge MMA career. People don't know that like yeah, Ben Askren only know. knows how to wrestle and has only wrestled his whole career. And then, and then they and then they then they <laughs> then they got the audacity to like promote like I just beat an Olympian <laughs> and, and, so, and and you know some twelve year old kid in his basement's like yeah you know Jake Paul just beat an Olympic boxer <laughs> and they're like no it was no, different no, it's it 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 totally it's different, like what yeah. other we, you know we got any other the disc uh, sweeping what what are the curling Olympians oh, next <laughs> in this fight Jake Paul versus a curling Olympic gold medalist. I'll, I'll Beat up the uh, the uh, the Olympic curling guy, and then I'll, I'll say I outskated an Olympic skater. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! But those boxing matches are just like 
yeah. crazy to me. Because like, oh, I watch. But they're playing forty chess with the world because they're like, yeah, they are. They're like, oh, I got this guy who was like an MMA champion. I beat him in a fight. But like, yeah. all he Ben Askren really just wrestled everybody. Yeah. And like Tyron Woodley, I've always not been a big fan of him in MMA, but that's because I feel like he like sat back so much and like waited. Yeah, I, I, like, waited. I, I was and a like, big in the Jake Paul fight, I'm like, fan I in Strike Force. In Strike Force, Strike Force, Tyron Woodley was an animal. He was a, he was afraid, not of pain, not of suffering, not of all of that. He was like, so he got up there to the big money. You know, the pressure mm-hmm. to provide for family and in the rest of your life was there, I guess. So he wanted to. And the meta changes, you know, everybody's afraid to take a risk. So imagine fighting somebody that never shoots on you or never tries to go for a strike so you yeah. can't counter them. They just sit in front yeah. of you. Yeah. I was going to yeah. ask you your experience in Thailand. You mm-hmm. went out to How long oh, were you, you in Thailand? Uh, was it three months the first one, one month the second one? So just two trips of that. Um, going back again in January, I believe. Oh, really? Year. Yeah. What's what's your... Um... Yeah, yeah. Um, what it was your um what was your uh like what was tell us about the experience <laughs> <laughs> tell us about the experience no you know? I really want to hear about this no, I've always just, wanted to go it's just an experience and uh, I'm, I'm afraid to say I won't get into all the other uh, nightlife details oh uh, you, you're oh, chasing gosh. down them lady boys uh, uh, what are you talking about <laughs> you haven't seen those lady boys man you haven't hey seen I have them. friends oh, who've gosh. been in Thailand I've yeah. heard all about the lady boys yeah uh, then you then you know then you know <laughs> um you know it was it's a great where are you going to train to there. Have. Hmm? Where do you go? Do you go to like Tiger, Fairtex? Like where? Um, I usually try a few different places. First one was Jitty Gym. Second one was um, this place called Fighter Gym down in uh, Rawai. It's like a little gym. I wanted to go to this. Uh, to... First one was Jitty because it was very foreigner friendly. Um, and my coach, Mackin, has been there before, so I had a connection. Mm-hmm. So I developed that was a good start off, you know, connection. You know, everybody knows English, yada, yada. And then the second one was I picked a small off place so I could be very well attended to, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Like, the coaches will give you more time. So when you go to places like Tiger, there's a lot of big fishes there. Yeah. Well, fishes, yeah. Look at my English. Um, so you won't get as much time. and You have to work your way back up. So, But this time, um, if I get a, a few people that I think are going to, I do want to try Tiger this time, even though okay. I've tried to stay away from it. Um, to make sure we get some extra wrestling in too, and and jiu- they have a good jujitsu and wrestling great program. Great jujitsu wrestling yeah. program there. Yeah, they got a lot of uh, DJ Jackson. The coach? DJ Jackson is no longer associated with them. Why? What happened? Time Money changes. Money. <laughs> okay. There's a whole. There was a whole post. There's a whole thing with it. There's a whole post. Okay. With it. Yep. Is I he back in the United States? Um, I don't know where he is. He's at another gym now. I don't okay. know if he's in the United States, but I know supposedly something happened involving money, and then they're like, we cut ties with them. Huh. There's, yeah, a, there's a post. Um, just, I'm sure there's more behind crew, the scenes. So crew Brian showed it to me one day when I was talking to him. Who's Crew Brian? Um, the guy on Stanley Combatants. Oh, uh, okay. Gotcha. I don't. I don't. Oh, he he's I, gone. To, <laughs> he's a big Muay Thai guy. He's gone okay. to Thailand a bunch of times. He'd be a cool guy to get on here. Cool. But, but yeah, the about. the experience is good, as far as training. You get your fights. They're always at random. You don't have to cut weight, um, unless it's a bigger fight. And then, uh, but the biggest lesson I've learned over there was, it sounds stupid until you actually experience it. Is uh got rid of doubt right they do repetitions and it, it's a lot more involved in that it makes it sound very silly when i just say it as plain as that but if you want to get good good at something you do it and do a lot of it yeah uh there's no special formula mm-hmm. there's a million ways to get to the same destination whether you go around the right of the mountain the left of the mountain or over the mountain you're still getting to the same destination but you have to take the steps. You literally have to take the steps, and that's what the training is and the repetition is. Getting rid of doubt. I went over there and said, wow, this is how they're doing. This is how they've been doing it forever, and it makes sense. So then you come back to town, and you don't wonder what's the best way to train. What happens if I don't you learn this combo? And I'm like, no, just just punch the bag, punch the mitts, do all the above, and just keep doing it. Like they were, The myth was gone. And once you get rid of doubt and you know the straight path, even if you don't know where it leads, you just know the paths there, it made it easy. Yeah. Just keep training. Just keep training. Yeah, man. That's that's like life advice, not just like training. That was good. It's all all together. Fighting will teach a lot about life and life about Mm -hmm. fighting. Yeah. It's it's all very, it shows the soul. Yeah. All right, we gave you five more minutes. You got five more minutes. Five minutes. Five more minutes. All right. I hope I'm back. I get to come back again. Oh, yeah, you get to come back again for sure. For sure. All right. what, What should we talk about? Five more minutes. We need stories. Oh, story, story. Should we talk about the manager guy? Oh, no, wait, can we please? Because this is the first you know time about I ever... the manager? No, uh, is it the place I almost got kicked out of because of you? 
Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. oh you want to do that? No, we can, that, we can that, talk, yeah, that's my story. There's a particular yeah. organization that okay, used I don't know to have an employee that um, was, uh, was, was. I mean, a bit but this of, is a story about me. We don't need to talk a story about me. Let's talk a story about you. It's a bit of a spirit of general. I mean, I, I, I like these stories. All right. Your audience All right. Tell me, the story. tell me the story. Tell me the story. Tell me the story. Tell me the story. I don't have as big of a story as you, but we got to talk about your stories with the guy. So we were training, and. And uh, I had this thing, you know, interviews or whatever. So I wanted to have Eric come in and be my translator, not being my actual <laughs> translator. Not actually being – well, I warned you in training. I told you I was going to do it. You just didn't so believe me. just dropped the ball on you right then? No, you we were training. It was like literally like three months in advance when he like heard he was having this fight. He's like, Eric, you're going to come to the corner as my translator afterwards. And I'm like, we're in the middle of jujitsu class. Like, I'm soaking wet in sweat, sitting there. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, going on, like getting my really? next round. No, there was a there was a, a bit of a joke about it. And you yeah. didn't think I was gonna do it. Just like no, everybody else. You doubted me, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Never doubt me. <laughs> Never doubt the dude. <laughs> <laughs> so So you did it. You so, did it. I so, remember <laughs> being on the side watching what was happening and just dying laughing. Yeah, so um piece of garbage. So, so I called him in, I'm like, I need my translator. It was the whole thing was I was gonna have have, you know, you translate for me, but I was still going to speak English. But it was going to be like a thing to where like I'm, a, I don't speak to the the interviewer. <laughs> I don't speak to the interviewer because he's not good enough to speak to me. So he has to speak to you, who speaks to me. You're the mediator, you know. <laughs> you know. So so anyway, I brought him in, and he wasn't credentialed to come in the in the in the in the cage. It was there. a victory. Uh, the corners allowed in the cage during a. He victory. wasn't a corner. He wasn't no, a corner. Have corner. He was in the. He was in the <laughs> crowd. I found him in the crowd, and I pointed. I was like, "Come on!" And you're like looking around, and I'm like, "Eric, come, come." <laughs> yeah. So he the, came. Then, the, the thing was, the guy stopped me outside the cage. He's like, "Why are you going there?" I'm like, "He told me to. I don't know." And he goes, "Okay." And the guy stands in the cage, lets me go in. Okay. So, said fine. He's like, "Just take off your shoes." I'm like, "Okay." It's Walk official. In. It's official. So the employee <laughs> let me go in. <laughs> Then and then I was like, and then uh, the certain individual that if you're if you've been around the the scene for what ten years, yeah, 15, you've, you've you know you you've definitely encountered this individual. guy. So he started yelling at him, and he's walking off. I'm like, I need my translator, Eric. I need my <laughs> translator. <laughs> so then the next fight. Um, oh wait, no, we gotta finish that night before okay. the next fight. So then after this, like he tells me to leave the cage. I'm like, okay, fine. I leave. He's like, he goes and finds me like a half an hour later and tries to kick me out. A half hour later, mm. like comes is walking like you he's know how they said like the bleachers. Probably just mad. He's yeah, he was looking furious. Around, saw you. No, just, but like, I was I like literally went to the top of the crowd, like hid behind people, like crunched down, like made myself real small, and like came up and found me, like was walking through the stands trying to find me, and then trying to kick me out. I was like, I've been so here for another half hour. There's he, one fight left in the night, and right. he came up to me in the in the locker room afterwards, and he's like, I, I spoke with you before. You speak perfect English, and he's like, What are you? What is this trade? I was like, I, I forgot. I, you know, it was a big moment. I forgot in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that too. Oh, the I was moment's bigger in the than back. Me. I remember that. So I was like, "Wow, he's getting awfully aggressive." Obviously, this guy is trolling everybody. Like, <laughs> like and you're just you're just doubling down. Like he's gonna double down on you right now and just make you look foolish. Like, so, well, then and then the next time we uh, um we we were fighting. Actually, that's when I fought uh, Aiko. I haven't seen. Does he train it all anymore? No, no, he uh he. Moved down to Georgia, uh, military. Okay, cool, yeah, cool. Uh, cool. Pops back up from time to time. Cool guy. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah so, so, uh, so th- I was fighting him. You were on the other side of the, the cage from. Him. So they were they were talking, and uh, you know, in the rules meeting, he's like, no, no, no translate, and then they're like, he's like, yeah, no translator. <laughs> but I, and and like I was like, Just but I need my. Tra- I was like, I, but I need my. And then and Ron like goes like this, and he's like, stop. <laughs> so in the interview afterwards, I'm like, I can I, I did the I put on the uh, the, the I put on the yeah I was like I can now need I can now speak English and no longer need translator, and I can see him by the cage like getting pissed off, and I'm like I looked at him like I no longer need. Translator. <laughs> Wait, did you start that with them? I am not impressed with my performance. <laughs> no, I was my first, speak? my first oh, okay. ever fight was that I did the I'm not impressed by my performance. Yeah, but yeah, that was that was fun times. Tell your stories with this guy, oh, and then we're gonna just, be out of here. Like, I just, you know, he's an official, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, so he's he's gonna be demanding in all scenes, and I just went along with it, just like everything else. I'm here to do my job, which I don't get paid for anyway, whatever. And then um, I ended up doing like a few, like a, fe- a fight fell through. So I ended up doing like a grappling match and couldn't really find anybody. So we did it. I did it against Stephen Miller, which if nobody knew was way better than me. Yeah. So we just did it anyway. Um, 
So then we did it. It was a two phase. It was a weird grappling match. I remember you guys took the geese. It was a geese. That was the same day as. Yeah, you were fighting Aiko. Yeah. And then, so we did the geese. And as soon as he submitted me in the gi, we took it off and did no gi. So yeah, he was better than me. I knew knew what it is. I just wanted some cage time and, you know, ring time. Um, So anyway, leaving the cage. That same guy that we're talking about, who's just a bit bit crazy, was like, that was the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life, watching you get submitted twice. And I, I was just like, oh, bud, you just hit my shit list for forever. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah why the hell would you say that to I, you? Exactly. Yeah, that's, I, that's a nice I was, a-hole. I was lenient uh, up until that yeah. point, but at that point, I'm like, nah, bud, you got to be put down. And uh, yeah, I, mean, I remember him talking. Longer. I remember him talking about... Uh, we were. It was a pre-fight thing, and he was talking about Matt Oakley. Remember Matt Oakley back in the day? Uh, ringing a bell. He was like one seventy pound, like champion, stellar fights. Mm-hmm. Like he never it's fought pro or anything. A big bell. But he he was. I remember him talking like, you know, I told Matt Oakley that he, last time he took too long on his entrance, and I'm gonna fine him or like I'm gonna deduct a point. <laughs> like, so that's like, bro. What, I think that's what happens when somebody that is just crazy like that or insecure in a million different ways finally gets power finally gets power yeah because yeah. at the end of the day it's like it's also it was also Maybe. an amateur thing so it's like okay the worst thing you're gonna do is give somebody a maintain a control loss. for safety reasons you don't yeah. have to worry about any of that else yeah, yeah. Took it too far. He took it too far. I guess his application to the UFC got declined. And <laughs> <laughs> took it to heart. Dana was like, eh, he was like, Dana, I've been managing these amateur fighters. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> after, after remembering that guy, that's the voice. I feel like it makes sense for him. As a yeah, person. that's how his voice goes. All right, um, we all gotta go. I guess here. Yeah, I gotta, uh, I gotta run to another Jesse corner. Stern, Eric. Doesn't want to say his name, um, and he's R- the Rhino. Rhino and the dude. The Rhino and the dude. Episode. <laughs> One. One. Hell Talk yeah. to y'all soon. Yeah, have a great See weekend. You. Thanks for having me.